University of Iowa, where the Boilermakers, who stand atop of the Big Ten race by a game over Ohio State and a game and a half ahead of Indiana, will battle the Iowa Hawkeyes, who are two games back at the moment and tied with Minnesota. These two teams met back on January 30 at Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, and the Boilermakers won that one by a score of 70 to 56, led by Joe Barry Carroll with 17 points. This is a very, very big Big Ten basketball game for both these clubs, probably more so for the Iowa Hawkeyes, because Iowa must win probably to have any shot at all at the chance of uh, a title or tying of the title. At the moment, they are two back. If they lose, they're three off the pace with six losses probably out of the race. The Boilermakers, on the other hand, could stand a loss, but uh, they need to win to protect their one-game lead over the Ohio State Buckeyes. Already this afternoon, the Indiana Hoosiers, who had been tied with Ohio State for second spot, have lost to Illinois 89-68, to dropping a game and a half back. I'm Joe Pate. Bob Ford is with me, and we'll be back to check on the starting lineups for you in just a moment. Winning all uh, of their uh, non-conference games. Then the uh, Hawkeyes started to play in the Big Ten race, and the Hawkeyes lost four of their first five. They lost to Michigan and Ohio State, then won over Wisconsin, then dropped games to Indiana and Michigan State. But of recent, the Hawkeyes have righted themselves and now have come on to win four of their last five, having defeated uh, Northwestern and Minnesota, then losing to Purdue, then beating Minnesota again, and then Michigan State. An interesting game on Thursday night when Michigan State came in here. Michigan State slowed it down, and the halftime score was only eight to six in favor of uh, Iowa. The Hawkeyes went on to win that one 44 to 39. The Boilermakers had a tough game on Thursday night against Minnesota, winning that one 58 to 56. Bob, as we indicated, this is going to be a big game, and Iowa is really putting everything in this one. They've been talking about it. They've been having news breaks on the radio. Everything has been geared for this one. It's going to be a big one, Joe, no doubt about it. It'll be physical, and depending on how the uh, physical activity goes underneath each basket, how the officials call the game will probably determine the outcome in terms of being able to fight and get rebounds and play defense. Now the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. First of all, for the Boilermakers, who have an overall record of 15 and 5, the same as the Hawkeyes, 8 and 3 in conference play, the Hawkeyes 6 and 5. Well, they're still making some uh, preliminary announcements down there before the starting lineup. 13,365 is the capacity of this old arena. Two years from now, they'll have a new one seating 15,000. There probably are 14,000 in here today. Here's Arnett Holman, the 6'7 senior out of Chicago, averaging 9.2, one of the forwards for the Boilermakers. Kevin Boyle will be one of the starting forwards, 6'6 sophomore. He, too, is out of Chicago, leading score, 12.3. Drake Morris, the 6'6 junior out of East Chicago, played at East Chicago, Washington, averaging 9.9. 52 is Steve Waite, one of the forwards from Iowa City, also a 6'10 junior. He is averaging eight points per game. The Boilermaker center is Joe Barry Carroll, the 7'1 senior from Denver. Joe Barry has been having a little problem offensively here in the last three or four games, but he still is averaging 22.5, leading the team in scoring and rebounding. The center for the Hawkeyes is number 54, Steve Patterson. He's a 6'10 junior out of Chicago, team's third leading scorer, averaging 11.9. Keith Edmondson, the 6'5 sophomore from San Antonio, averaging 12.3, will be one of the starting guards for the Boilermakers, the second leading scorer for the Boilermakers this year. Here is Bob Hanson, a starting guard for Iowa, 6'5 freshman out of Des Moines, averaging 4.7. And the final of the starters for the Boilermakers is Brian Walker, the 6'2 junior out of Lebanon, averaging 3.6. The other starting guard for the Iowa Hawkeyes, number 30, is Kenny Arnold out of Chicago, the 6'2 sophomore, averaging 12 points per contest. Of course, Lester is on the bench. He's the leading scorer, averaging 16, but he won't play and will not play for a number of games. Also, Mark Gannon is not in the... Uh 
uniform here for the Hawkeyes. He was an important recruit last year coming uh, out of high school. He was expected to be a big part of this Iowa lineup. He won't play today with a leg injury. And this game will be much like the Minnesota game, Joe, in that they have some big people underneath the basket. And uh, Waite, along with Krasison, present a problem for Purdue, and it'll be very physical. The officials here this afternoon, they're going to have a battle on their hands, much like they did on Thursday night. Robert Bursons will be one of them, Fred Jasper, and Gil Haggard, and they're going to have a lot of basketball to watch out there on the court today. In the game back on January 30, when the Boilermakers won at 70 to 56, Purdue hit 28 out of 64 from the field. Iowa was 24 out of 62 at the line. The Boilermakers hit only 14 of 25, while Iowa went to the line 14 times and converted eight. The Boilermakers out-rebounded Iowa in that one, 45 to 38. Turnovers were just about equal. Iowa had 15 and Purdue 14. 54 is Trafterson at 6'10". The Boilermakers, Joe Barry Carroll at 7'1". The Boilermakers get the ball, and Edmondson will set it up. Iowa is in a man-to-man -man defensive alignment. Just underway with today's big game from Iowa City. They go to Carroll. Carroll shoots, and it rolls off. It's uh, deflected outside and retrieved there by Keith Edmondson for the Boilermakers. He is guarded by Bob Hanson at 6'5". Underneath the walking violation, and the ball is given to the Iowa Hawkeyes. A lot of traffic on the inside. Wade and Krasison both back inside on Carroll that time as he tried to get to the ball to the basket. 33, Drake Morris seems to have recovered from his deep thigh brew that he had against Minnesota on Thursday. Kevin Boyle fires it up there and scores for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Iowa takes a 2-0 lead in the first 40 seconds of play. Our pickup today is being provided by KWWL in Waterloo, Iowa. At the top of the key is Arnett Holman, sends it over to the left side. Underneath, Carroll trying to tie. It rolls off. Arnett Holman can't hold the ball. And picking the ball up is Kenny Arnold. Arnold comes down. A foul is called on Drake Morris. Number one on him. First on either team. We played exactly one minute in this one from Iowa City. And the Boilermakers make a substitution. And Steve Walker, number 12, comes in to replace Drake Morris. Iowa doing the same thing against Carroll here as they did in West Lafayette. Just before the shot, he's getting a little body contact, knocking him off balance. He hasn't been able to get the ball in the basket yet after three shots. So that's something that he may have to fake first, wait for the contact, and then take the shot. Arnold will put it in play and does to Steve Waite, the 6'10 junior out of Iowa City, averaging eight points per contest. Setting it up is Kenny Arnold. Arnold on the drive, stops, and puts it up. No. Ball tipped away and into the hands of Steve Walker. Keith Edmondson takes it into the forecourt, and the walking violation gives the ball to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Two turnovers already for Purdue. In the Minnesota game here against Iowa, the Hawkeyes got off 12 to nothing in the first half and then did the same thing in the second half, scoring 14 straight. So you have to be careful of the Hawkeyes and not let them get out in front of you as the game begins. This is Kenny Arnold on the dribble. It's a 2-0 score. Arnold stopped. Out to the top is Bob Hansen. Hansen works into the lane, stops and shoots, and it rolls off, tipped around, and it falls off again into the hands of Brian Walker. Brian brings it up. He's guarded closely by Bob Hansen. It comes over to Steve Walker, back outside to Keith Edmondson. Now to Steve Walker. Edmondson. Man to man for the Hawkeyes. Brian goes to Carroll, turns, shoots, and it rolls off. But it is tipped by Steve. No, pulled off the board there by number 40, Kevin Boyle, the 6'6 sophomore, who pulls down five rebounds a game. There's a foul called on Steve Walker. Number one on him, number two on the team. The ball will be out of bounds of the common foul. We played nearly two minutes, and it's only a 2 0 score. Iowa leads. Boilermakers have had a number of shots at the basket, but nothing will fall thus far. Already today, Michigan defeated Wisconsin 68-59. Indiana was a loser to Illinois, 89-68. On the dribble is Arnold. Lays the ball off to Hanson, guarded by Steve Walker. Comes inside to Krafterson. Lays it away, and the ball is knocked away, but it's out of bounds. It'll belong to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa beat the Boilermakers twice last year at Purdue, 56-46, the only Big Ten game that the Boilermakers lost at home, and here, 75-72. Good inside defense that time by Carroll and Brian Walker as they worked together to stop that play. Last year, Carroll had one of his biggest games right here when he scored 36 points in a losing cause. The shot by Hanson is good. 
Hampton first basket and the Hawkeyes lead 4 nothing. We played better than two and a half minutes and Purdue has not yet scored in this game. Edmondson brings it up. Steve Walker at the top of the key over to Arnett Hallman. First basket of the afternoon for the Boilermakers scored by Hallman and it took Purdue about two minutes and 50 seconds before the Boilermakers were able to get on the board. Pressure in the backcourt and here should be a charging foul. No, they're going to be a walk. Well, that's all right. The ball goes to Purdue. And a substitution coming back in for Purdue will be Drake Morris and he'll replace Steve Walker. That's the first turnover for the Iowa Hawkeyes. In the uh, first time these two teams met, Iowa had 15 turnovers. The Boilermakers were guilty of 14. That game was played at Mackey Arena. Three minutes exactly gone by. It's a 4-2 score in favor of Iowa. Iowa trailing the Boilermakers in the standings by two. Purdue leads Ohio State by one and Indiana by a game and a half. Arnett Hallman fires up there. It's off the mark, tipped around, kept alive. But there's a foul, and Carroll is guilty of the foul. Number one on Joe Barry Carroll. Number three on the Boilermakers. No fouls yet on the homestanding Iowa Hawkeyes. Ball will be out of bounds to Iowa in the Hawkeye backcourt. Number 35, Ted Benson has come in for Joe Barry Carroll, who will sit down after the foul so that he doesn't get another quick one. And so on the dribble is Kenny Arnold. Brings it down. Gives the ball off to Kevin Boyle. Boyle on the dribble. Outside to wait. Back to Kevin Boyle. Inside to Crafterson. Out now to Hanson. Shots blocked. Benson comes down with it. Deflects the ball to Walker. Walker goes ahead to Arnett Hallman. Hallman will give it to uh, Drake Morris. Morris inside. Goes to Brian Walker. Throws it off the knee of one of the Boilermakers and it'll be out of bounds to Purdue. Substitution. Carroll will come back in for the Boilermakers. The Iowa Hawkeyes have not made any substitutions. In fact, they've not gotten any points from their reserves in the last two games and did not substitute in the game on Thursday night against the Michigan State team. But the score was only 8-6 to six at the halftime. Also into the game for the Boilermakers is Kevin Stallings, and he'll trigger the ball inbounds for Purdue. Into the corner to Edmondson. Back out to Drake Morris. Drake really had a great first half the other night against Minnesota. Carroll puts it up, scores. Carroll's first basket, and the Boilermakers have tied the game. 4-4. Carroll went quick that time on the hook shot. Didn't give Iowa a chance to get back in on the defense, and it worked well. Kevin Boyle with the ball, makes his move on the baseline, drives in, had the ball knocked away, and the foul on Carroll, number two on it. Number four on the team. Carroll trying to block the ball. Got the foul, and so it'll be a shooting violation, and the Hawkeyes will be at the line trying to break a tie. The Hawkeyes have not fouled yet in this game. Good move here by Boyle to go to the inside. There you see Carroll coming from the backside. Hallman was in front of the uh, drive by Boyle, had a chance at the block. Carroll on the foul from behind. That's two, and that is very important. 15-51 remaining here in the first half. Hawkeyes at the line this year, shooting 688. Purdue, 667. Neither one has been very proficient at the free throw line, though Kevin Boyle gets his third point here, and the Hawkeyes break the tie, go up by four. Kevin Boyle on the year shooting 76%, 37 out of 49 coming into the game. It is good. There's a timeout on the floor with 1551 to play here in the first half. You're watching Purdue basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Iowa leads Purdue 6 to 4. With Bob Ford, this is Joe Pate. We're back in Iowa City. Iowa City, Iowa, at the home of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Delighted to have you along the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network for our game today. At the moment, Iowa is ahead of Purdue by a score of 6-4. to four. The Boilermakers play their next game next Thursday at Northwestern, and then they will be home to Wisconsin. The Iowa Hawkeyes will play host to Indiana next Thursday, and then will be at Northwestern on Saturday. Both teams have taken six shots here in the first half, or seven shots, I should say, and uh, each one of them has hit two, so they're very equal in that area. The two free throws are the difference in the game, and Iowa has done a good job on the backboard. The Boilermakers have had difficulty uh, shooting uh, in the last eight games, in fact, shooting only 41%, but the defense has done a tremendous job. Kevin Stallings on the dribble against Arnold. Purdue trails by two. Here's a pass into Arnett Holman, trying to tie it. He got the roll, and the game is tied on the second basket of the afternoon by Arnett Holman. We're tied at six. 
We played four and a half minutes in this one. Great basketball in the Big Ten this year. Boilermakers atop the standings with a mark of eight and three. Ohio State is second at seven and four, and Ohio State plays Michigan State tonight. Hanson sends it away. It is saved, however, on a nice play by Kenny Arnold. Give that ball back to Boyle. Boyle stopped by Carroll. Gives it out there to Arnold. Uses up the dribble. It comes off to Kevin Boyle, averaging 12.3. Arnold fires. It's off the mark. Carroll got the rebound. Rebounds at nearly nine per game. Kevin Stallings, the junior college transfer out of Collinsville, Illinois, has done a good job off the bench for the Boilermakers this year. He's guarded by Kenny Arnold. Stallings needs help. Comes out here to Drake Morris. Knocked away. Retrieves it. Game is tied at six. Boilermakers have an opportunity to get the lead for the first time here. Keith Edmondson at the 15-foot mark goes off to Hallman. Back to Edmondson. Edmondson couldn't score against the Minnesota squad from the field on Thursday. In fact, he didn't score a field goal in the other one. We got a call. Three-second violation. Third turnover for Purdue. One for the Hawkeyes. The ball belongs out of bounds to Iowa. Iowa plays a good, solid man-to-man -man defense. That time, forcing Purdue to the outside, not able to get into the offense. Mike Scarce, 23 into the lineup for Purdue, and Drake Morris will take a seat. The 96th time these two teams have met on the hardwood, Purdue leads the series 51-44. Been difficult to win here at, uh, at Iowa City, though. Only 15 times if Purdue has Purdue come away with the victory. Iowa's won 31. In this arena, it's 26 and 12 in favor of Iowa. Boyle sends it inside to wait. Fires, no. Arnett Holman is fouled by Steve Waite. That's the first foul called on the Hawkeyes here. And we played five minutes and 58 seconds. Four fouls have been called against Purdue. Two of those against the center, Joe Barry Carroll. Ball belongs to Purdue. We're still tied at six. Six minutes gone by. Low scoring games in the uh, Big Ten this year. Arnett Hallman gives it out to Stallings. Goes to Carroll. Carroll from the baseline. Long. And it's pulled down by Steve Crafterson, the 6'10. Wait on the dribble. Stopped by Stallings. Gives the ball to Hanson. Fires. Good. Hanson's second basket. Hawkeyes lead by two. It's eight to six. 13 26 to play in the half. Purdue averaging nearly 71 points a game this year. Iowa nearly 74. This is Carroll back out to Edmondson. Edmondson making his move, trying to tie it. Didn't get the roll. Off the board is Boyle. Bringing it down quickly as Hansen lays it to Crafterson. But the follow through is good. And the basket is by Hansen. He's got six, and the Hawkeyes lead by four. Hawkeyes jumped off to a 4 0 lead. The Boilermakers came back to tie it at four. Here's Carroll jumping. No. Foul. And a foul is going to be called on the Hawkeyes, and it'll be on Waite, his second, and the second on the Hawkeyes. Substitution, Vince Brookins comes in. Number 32, 6'5", junior out of Cleveland. And sitting down is Kevin Boyle. And so Carroll will be going to the free throw line, and Joe Barry will have two. Shooting 69%, having gone to the line 112 times and hit 77. First time Purdue's been at the free throw line this afternoon. Iowa's been there twice, and the Hawkeyes have converted on both occasions. Purdue down by four. As Carroll, with a 22.5 average this year, pumps in his first free throw of the afternoon, and he's got three points. Now Carroll tries to cut it to two. Lute Olson, the head man at uh, Iowa, is three and eight against Purdue. Two and one against Lee Rose. The ball is pulled off by Waite. He gets six rebounds a game. Iowa leads by three. Vince Brookins fires and scores on his first shot since coming off the bench. 12-7, Iowa by five. Biggest lead. Stallings on the dribble. They're loud here in the Iowa Fieldhouse. 14,000 of them are in here. Carroll gives it out to Stallings. Been man-to-man -man all the way. Stallings comes down to Scarce. Looks for help. Out to Arnett Holman. 
Now to Stallings. Now to Carroll. Carroll up. No foul. And Waite is guilty of it. And I believe that'll be his third. Steve Waite guilty of the foul. Lute Olson, a little displeased with the call. Carroll on the inside has not been able really to ripple the nets other than once on a hook shot, and he's taken about nine shots already here in the first half. The contact again that time by Iowa. That's their game plan is to knock Carroll off balance. He now at the free throw line needs to take advantage of these two. Wade has all three of the fouls the Iowa Hawkeyes have. The ball finally falls through. Fourth point of the afternoon for Carroll. Substitution 40. Kevin Boyle is in, and Wade is out. It's a 12-8 score. Purdue is two out of three at the line. Carroll has been up there all three times. Looking for his fifth point. 12.09 to play, first half. Carroll scores. It's 12 to 10. Farm Bureau Insurance and its 500 agents in the state of Indiana presenting the action today from Iowa City. Purdue back home a week from today, battling Wisconsin. Vince Brookings with the ball, gives it outside. Kenny Arnold. Wallamakers in a zone. Boyle sends it inside. The ball knocked away, and Stallings comes down with it. A good hustle underneath the basket. Good job by Carroll, with, even with two fouls, played the defense and made the block that time. Edmondson gives it out to Arnett Hallman. Byers scores. No basket. Walking. Four turnovers for Purdue. Arnett Hallman walking. We'll have a timeout with 11.34 to play in the first half. You are watching Purdue Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue trails Iowa 12 to 9. Leads Purdue by three points, 12 to 9. The Hawkeyes here on this floor this year have won eight times and lost only once. The loss was to Ohio State, 77 to 71. Arnett Hallman uh, has four points here this afternoon. Joe Barry Carroll has five. That's the nine for Purdue. Speaking of Arnett, he really likes to play against the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's played 54 games as a Boilermaker, averaging 8.7 and 5.2 rebounds. Against Iowa in three games, he's averaging 12.3 points and nine rebounds a game. This is Arnold giving the ball off. Brookens fires off. No. Scarce pulls the ball off. Scarce is rebounding at uh, nearly four per game. Edmondson guarded closely by... Hanson, Edmondson doesn't get the roll, and it is pulled off by Boyle. Tricky dribble, gives the ball there to uh, Arnold. Almost lost, Hanson goes back to get it. And now Kenny Arnold will set it up. We're 52 seconds away from the midway point of the first half. Iowa leads by three under Sneath, and scoring is Travis in his first basket. And the Hawkeyes lead by four. Great pass inside that time by Boyle. Travison made the cut and was free. Carroll couldn't play the defense on the help. Ten and a half minutes to play in the half. Here's Carroll with the ball. We'll give it back out to Edmondson, and Stallings will set it up now. Arnett Hallman walked, and so it'll be out of bounds. That's the fifth turnover for Purdue. We'll have a substitution. Brian Walker is in, and Stallings is out. Iowa has really forced Purdue to spread out their offense, not allowing the inside play as Edmondson hasn't been able to get that little 10-footer that he likes to take. Hallman has been way to the outside, and Carroll hasn't been able to hit the short shot. Second time, the Hawkeyes have been up by as many as five. Scarce knocked it away. It'll belong to Iowa. On January 30, Purdue defeated Iowa 70-56. to Purdue had four players in double figures against the Hawkeyes that Thursday, led by Carroll 17. Steve Craftison for the Hawkeyes scored 17 also. Way across to Hanson, guarded by Carroll. Boyle on the baseline. Double teamed in the corner. Fires it way outside, and Arnold saves it. 9.47 to play in the half. Delighted to have you along the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network for today's Big Ten basketball battle. Here is a walking violation, only the second turnover for Iowa. Purdue has thrown the ball away five times. Purdue trails by five, 14 to nine. Iowa really working that Purdue zone. Not the defense Purdue would like to be in, but with Carroll having the two personal fouls here in the first half, they've got him on a wing to make sure, or at least to protect him against getting that third one, forcing Arnett Holman to play center. Mike Scarce out to uh, 
Walker almost got away from Edmondson. Arnett Holman into Carroll. Under and up. No foul. And the foul will be checked against number 32, Vince Brookins. Number one on him. Number four on the team. Each team has been whistled for four fouls. But three of the Hawkeye fouls are against Steve Waite. At 6'10", who's on the bench. And two against the Boilermakers against Carroll. Carroll has two tries. He's three out of four this afternoon. Been a problem for Purdue at the free throw line, shooting only 667 as a team. Carroll, 69%. Joe Barry had 14 or 15 free throws the other night against Minnesota, and at one point hit nine in a row, and it looks like he's going to shoot a bunch here today. That's his sixth point of the afternoon. That cuts the lead 14 to 10. Purdue is three out of six at the line. The Hawkeyes are two out of two. Wallamakers in a 2 3 zone. Nearly 11 minutes gone by in the game. Arnold on the dribble, gives it to Brookins, fires, didn't get the roll, and Carroll got the rebound. Walker takes it up. Ryan on the dribble. Stopped there by Arnold. Mike Scarce can take the shot and hit from there. Scarce gets the basket. There's also a foul called on the play, and it'll be on Hanson, number one on him. That's five on the team. That cuts the lead 14 to 12, and uh, the ball will be at the free throw line or out of bounds. Let's see. Going to be out of bounds. And so the Boilermakers have a chance to tie here. Big play by Purdue that time, getting the foul and also the free throw or the uh, basket at the same time, have the ball out of bounds. Chance for a four-point play and possibly five if they should get a three-pointer. Opportunity to tie. Walker almost let that ball get away off his knee there. 8.39 left to play in the first half. Purdue down by a 14-12 to 12 score. Edmondson comes back out to Brian Walker. Back to Scarce. From the other side, he ties it on two straight baskets. Game is tied at 14. Boilermakers have scored five unanswered points now to come into a 14-14 tie with the Hawkeyes. Repterson throws it away, but it hit a last by a Boilermaker. It'll be out of bounds to Iowa. With outside shooting from Scarce, if he continues to hit as Morris did against Minnesota, that's going to force the Iowa defense to have to come out, which will open it up inside for Carroll and Hallman. Outside to Brookins. Vince out of Cleveland, Ohio, a junior. Averages 11.2. Hawkeyes, of course, have been playing a lot of their games without Ronnie Luster, who was averaging 16 before he was injured. This is Brookins. Wanted to shoot. Throws it over to the left. And Hanson fires. Couldn't get it. The ball will go out of bounds. And I think Purdue may have gotten a break there. It'll be out of bounds to the Boilermakers. And uh, we'll have a timeout. With 7.52 remaining to be played here in the first half. You're watching Purdue Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue and Iowa are tied at 14. Back at Iowa City, we're tied. The Purdue Boilermakers and the Iowa Hawkeyes tied at 14. The Boilermakers have six points out of Carroll. Four out of six at the line of field goal. Mike Scarce has hit two consecutive baskets for four points. Arnett Holman has two baskets for four. That's the scoring for Purdue. Hanson has three baskets for six for Iowa. Vince Brookins has one for two. Boyle has a basket and two free throws for four. And Crafterson has a field goal for two. Boilermakers could take the lead here. Mike Scarce looking for three in a row. Couldn't get it. Carroll got the rebound. Carroll puts it up. He's fouled. And the foul, I believe, will be on number 54, Crafterson. That'll be number one on him. That's four fouls on the two big men. Steve Wade at 6'10", and Steve Crafterson at 6'10". That's six fouls against Iowa, four against Purdue. Joe Berry doing a good job on the backboard, working on the inside position, trying to force Iowa into fouling situations. He's had much more success from the line here this afternoon than he has from the field. Mm, that one wouldn't stay in. So he's four out of seven. Wallamakers trying to break a tie. Purdue has never led in the game. Down four nothing. Then tied it. Down. 12 to 7 and the Boilermakers lead for the first time on the seventh point of the afternoon for Carroll 15 to 14 Purdue lead seven and a half minutes to play Arnold couldn't get it Carroll got the rebound Edmondson takes it down this is Brian Walker back out to Mike Scarce now to Walker Scarce Edmondson Edmondson looking for his first basket. Can't get it. 
Pulled off there by Kenny Arnold. Stolen away. Carroll up. No. Foul on the play. And the foul will be, I believe, on Brookens. That'll be number two on Vince Brookens. Good job by Holman that time. Brookens on the rebound. Holman came from behind and knocked the ball away. Carroll picked it up, went to the basket with it. Couldn't get the, uh, the bucket, but he has another chance for two. Number 11 comes out. That's Edmondson. Into the lineup is Drake Morris. And Joe Barry Carroll will free throw line and he'll shoot two again. Carroll is at the line for the ninth time. Mm. Five out of nine at the free throw line for Purdue and Carroll. 15 to 14 Purdue. Seven minutes and three seconds to play in the first half. Carroll misses again. It is rebounded by Arnold. Arnold comes all the way down, shoots a not good percentage shot, but pumps it in, and the Hawks lead 16-15 on the first basket of the afternoon by Kenny Arnold. Brian Walker brings it up. Brian fires, didn't get it. Carroll can't get the rebound. Pull off by Brookins, and Hanson will bring it up. Hanson gives it off to Boyle, in underneath, traps and lays it up, and in! Four points for him. And the Hawkeyes lead by three, scoring four unanswered points. 18-15. Purdue has eight points from the field. Arnett Holman short, rebounded by Arnold. Patterson gets the ball, drives, scores, and an offensive foul on Patterson. He scored his six point, but also committed an offensive foul. That's the eighth on the team, number two on Steve. The score goes 20 to 15, five-point lead for Iowa. Also a charge on the play, and the Boilermakers have an opportunity to get some back. Number 35 back into the lineup for Purdue. Ted Benson, Joe Barry Carroll having a tough afternoon. We'll go to the bench for just a moment. There you see the contact as Mike Scarris was able to beat Patterson down the floor. And Patterson picks up two. That's five on their big people. Wade already on the bench with three. Craftsison now with two, and Mike Scarce will have a chance to bring Purdue within three. A one and bonus for Mike Scarce. He can't get it either, and it is Boyle off the board. Purdue is five out of 11 at the free throw line, and the difference is five points on the board. Hanson fires, no, off the board. Up and in, and I believe it'll be Hanson or Patterson, eight for Patterson, and the seven-point lead for Iowa, biggest lead of the afternoon. Purdue is led by only one on one occasion. Mike Scares fires, scores. Scares gets his sixth point of the afternoon. 22-17, Iowa. Ought to put those two up in lights for Mike Scares because the Boilermakers were in serious trouble at that point. They missed that one. Iowa comes down and scores, and the Hawkeyes are off to the races. Mike is a streak shooter, and he's hit three field goals here this afternoon. Maybe he's got the hot hand. Hanson with the ball, guarded by Arnett Holman, comes into the middle. Brian Walker reaches in, commits his first foul. Five on Purdue. Common foul gives the ball out of bounds to Iowa. Iowa on the year, six and five in conference play. Purdue is eight and three. Both teams have won 15 and lost five overall. 5-14 to play in the half. We are in Iowa City. Iowa leads by five. Biggest lead has been seven when it was 22 to 15. Here is Arnold. My, what a shot. Arnold's fourth field goal. A lead of 24 to 17. Seven point lead for Iowa. Ryan Walker on the dribble. Uses it up, goes to Arnett Holman. Fadeaway jumper, beauty for Arnett. He's got six. It's 24 to 19. Purdue trails by five with 440 remaining in the half. Vince Brookins beats outside to Kenny Arnold, who's hit two long ones. Turnaround jumper by Boyle, no. Ball tipped away, still loose, and uh, it's Vincent coming down with it. And Arnett Holman sends it ahead to Mike Scares. Purdue down by five, 420 remaining. We're in the first half. Your host is Farm Bureau Insurance and its 500 agents of the state of Indiana. Presenting Purdue basketball for the ninth consecutive year. The ball is out of bounds. It'll belong to Purdue. Ryan Walker protecting the ball very well. 
sliding down, but then the Hawkeye ran out of bounds over there. KWWL in Waterloo, Iowa is providing our technical and crew pickup here for today's game. Ball will be out of bounds to Purdue. Number 50, Mike Heller, a 6'8 freshman out of St. Paul, Minnesota, averaging point three points per game, is into the lineup for Iowa. Ryan Walker on the dribble, man-to-man -man for Iowa. He's working on Kenny Arnold. Out to Mike Scarce, who has three field goals. Mike from 16, didn't get the roll that time. Pulled off by Hansen. Quickly down is Vince Brookins, stolen away by Mike Scarce. Four turnovers for the Hawkeyes. Here is Drake Morris driving, couldn't get it. Loose ball pulled off by Hansen. Boilermakers got a little too quick, and Drake Morris got in underneath the basket a little bit. Drake doesn't have that bandage on his leg, Bob, like he had the other night. Here is Brian Walker from the back. His second foul and the sixth on the team. We'll have a substitution now for Purdue. Number 11, Keith Edmondson is back in and Scarce is out. So at the free throw line will be Kenny Arnold for the Iowa Hawkeye. Iowa playing with a lot of emotion and hustle here this afternoon. They know this is a big one for them. It's the one they have to win if they want to get back into the Big Ten race. The Boilermakers on top of the league can't afford a loss at this time, but they'd just as soon not and force Iowa really out of contention if they can win. Iowa's three out of three at the line. Six-point lead now for the Hawkeyes as Arnold looks for his sixth point of the afternoon. 26 to 19. And we have a timeout with three minutes and 28 seconds left to play in the first half. You're watching Purdue Basketball in the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue trails Iowa 26 to 19. The Boilermakers in the Big Ten competition have lost to Ohio State, Minnesota, and Indiana. The Hawkeyes have lost to Michigan, Ohio State, Indiana, or to Michigan, Ohio State, Indiana, Michigan State, and Purdue. Hawkeyes have won four out of their last five. The only loss was to Purdue, 70 to 56. It's Purdue's ball trailing by seven, 26 to 19 with 328 remaining here in the first half. With Heller in the lineup, Iowa has a much smaller club here to go the last few minutes to put pressure on Purdue with Joe Barry Carroll on the bench, not being able to get his act together here this afternoon. Iowa looking for that knockout punch here in the first half. This is Brian Walker coming over to uh, Drake Morris. Here's Arnett Hallman. That's uh, eight points for Arnett. That cuts the lead 26 to 21. As we indicated earlier in our broadcast or our telecast, Arnett in three outings against Iowa has averaged 12.3 per contest. This is Hanson and the foul. Edmondson, one on him, seven on the team. Iowa's been whistled for eight unofficially. The Boilermakers have been whistled for seven. One against Edmondson and Walker, two against Brian Walker and Carroll, and one against Drake Morris. Hanson will be at the free throw line. The Bob Hanson out at Des Moines. 6'5 freshman up there for the first time. The Hawkeyes are four out of four at the free throw strike. And no basket. It was tipped in by Kevin Boyle. No good. The ball will be out of bounds to Purdue. The official was right on that one, Bob. It's a tight play up there, and I, I can feel for Kevin Boyle. I was called for that several times when I was in school. The ball gets up there, and it gets you off balance. You get in the air. You don't know whether to touch it or not. And his decision evidently was the wrong one. Purdue down by five with 2.46 to play in the half. Ryan Walker goes to Arnett Holman, who has eight points here this afternoon, leading the Boilermakers in scoring. Carroll has seven, but he's on the bench at the moment. This is Keith Edmondson turning, spinning, putting it up. No foul. And Hansen is guilty of his second. Nine fouls called against Iowa. Two against Hansen, two against Brookins, two against Crafterson, and three against Steve Waite. So the Boilermakers will have Edmondson at the line. He's shooting 67%, 35 out of 52. Purdue is 5 out of 11 here. Ten of those have been taken by Carroll. The other by Scarce. Edmondson at the line for two. That's his first point of the afternoon. Purdue has a good opportunity here with this lineup in for Iowa to post up Keith Edmondson underneath the basket at 6'5", going against smaller guards. 
whether it's Hanson or Arnold, it's a good opportunity to get a big man on the inside for a good position in a short shot. Two of them by Edmonton, and that cuts the lead 26 to 23. This is Arnold outside of Boyle. Boilermakers in a man to man at the moment. And the ball was knocked away on a good defensive play by Brian Walker. It'll be out of bounds to the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Kenny Arnold, the Chicago sophomore, will fire it in. We'll have a substitution. And uh, coming out will be Brian Walker. And number 32, Kevin Stallings, checks in for Lee Rose and his Boilermakers. Lee, in his second year at Purdue, has won 42 and lost 13. Last year, 27 and 8, the most wins ever recorded by a Purdue basketball team in a single season. Hanson with the ball. Boyle wanted to shoot. We have exactly two minutes left to play in the half. Purdue is down by three. Here is a drive and missed by Brookins, but it is tipped in by Boyle. His sixth point, and the lead is 28 to 23, Iowa. Biggest lead has been seven. Iowa in a 2-3 zone. 140 left to play. First half. Stallings goes to Edmondson. Edmondson looking for his first field goal, and he gets it. Four points for him. It is 28-25. Iowa ahead with the ball and a bit of 24 to play in the half. Farm Bureau Insurance and its 500 agents of the state of Indiana presenting the action here from Iowa this afternoon. Four-corner offense by the Hawkeyes. They want to spread it out. They're trying to protect their big people who are both on the bench that started the game. That's Craftsison and Waite. Hiller got the loose ball and sent it back outside. The Boilermakers almost stole uh, it. Now the pass to Hanson. He's got eight. And the Hawkeyes lead 30 to 25. Exactly the way the offense is designed. Well, the other team to sleep. Pull them out away from the basket and get the backdoor play. Good job by Iowa and a beautiful shot by Hanson. Iowa, again, a zone put up there by the Hawkeyes. 42 seconds to play in the half. Arnett Holman looking for his 10th point. Couldn't get it. Rebounded by Drake Morris. He'll shoot it up there. Drake fires, scores. First basket of the afternoon for Drake. 30-27, Iowa. Half minute to play. 29 seconds now, and it's stopped as the ball is given back to the Hawkeyes. It comes inbounds to Kenny Arnold, and the Hawkeyes probably will work for the one shot here with 24 seconds remaining. Almost a steal and almost a foul by Arnett Holman. Three-point lead for Iowa. Heller sends it back out to Hanson, double-teamed. It goes to Heller, wanted to shoot. 12 seconds remaining, double team on Hanson. Here's the ball given to Arnold with seven seconds with six. Here is Brookins going to fire at the buzzer. No foul. Arnett Holman guilty of his first. And eight on the team. Two seconds left to play in the half. Good job that time by Brookins as he took the shot and went to the court. Not much contact, some, and he did a good job with the acting. Should get an Oscar. The important thing is he has a shot now to get a bigger lead here for the Hawkeyes. As we take a look at that action one more time, you'll see Brookins on the jump shot. Now, this is the play from a moment ago, the, uh, the lead pass inside to a 24, and that was Hanson as Brookins knocks the first free throw in the bucket. And the Hawkeyes are five out of six at the line and leading in this game uh, 31 to 27 as Brookins looks for his fourth point and gets it. Only two seconds remaining. And there is the buzzer. And that is the end of the first half of this basketball game between Purdue and Iowa. The score is Iowa 32 here. And it's still anybody's basketball game. The Boilermakers uh, shooting only 40% with trail by only five. Boilermakers, as we pointed out a couple of times before in the last eight games, have had difficulty in the offensive output, scoring only at about a 41% clip. Overall this year, the Boilermakers have been shooting about 49%. The opposition shooting about 42%. Iowa's been shooting 49% this year, and the opposition been shooting about 46%. The leading score so far for the Boilermakers has been Arnett Hallman, uh, with eight points, two players for Iowa also have eight apiece. They're Bob Hansen and Steve Craftison. Boilermakers have Keith Edmondson, Drake Morris, Joe Barry Carroll, Arnett Holman, and Brian Walker starting. Mike Scares out there at the center circle there with his jacket on. He's hustling Lee Rose. 
looking for his 275th victory here this afternoon. He's lost 88 in 13 years of collegiate coaching. 54 Crafterson, 24 is Hanson, 52 is Steve Waite, 30 is Kenny Arnold, and 40 is Kevin Boyle for the Hawkeyes. Start is important here in the second half. Purdue down by five. If they could run off a couple of buckets in a row and get right back into the thick of the action would be a big plus for them emotionally. And Joe Barry Carroll needs to hit a couple to get his confidence back. And Purdue gets the tip, and Brian Walker sends it to Drake Morris and gets it right back. It comes to Arnett Holman in the corner. Out to Keith Edmondson. Arnett makes the move, but he walks. Seven turnovers for Purdue, three for the Hawkeyes. 14 seconds elapsed. The Boilermakers had a shot at cutting it down by two, but got called for traveling. Here comes Kenny Arnold with six points, two field goals, two out of two at the line. All the way down, stops, shoots, and couldn't get it. It's rebounded by Arnold. Put it up again. Ball through. Arnold has eight points. And the Hawks lead by seven. Good hustle by Arnold to go back and get his own shot. Smallest man on the floor on the rebound took about a six-footer to get the bucket. Brian Walker comes down to Arnett, back to Edmondson. Edmondson, not to Brian Walker, hasn't scored in the game. Drake Morris has one field goal and drills in this one. Morris has four points. 34-29, Iowa. We played uh, 52 seconds in the second half. Arnold comes down. Three players for the Hawkeyes have eight apiece. That's pretty good balance scoring. Boyle lays it off. Here's Hanson fire. Score. Hanson has 10. Leading score on the floor. And the Hawkeyes lead by 7. 36-29. Minute 13 gone by. Second half. Farm Bureau Insurance and its 500 agents of the state of Indiana presenting Purdue basketball for the ninth consecutive year. Today we're in Iowa. Drake Morris with the ball with four points. And it knocked away. Stolen away from him by Kevin Boyle. Eight turnovers for Purdue. Hanson takes it up. Hanson feeds it off to Wade. Back to Hanson, guarded by Morris. Boilermakers getting ready to make a substitution. This is Boyle. Sends it inside. Crapsison has it knocked away, tipped up, pulled off by Wade. No, loose ball. Brian Walker comes down. Three on two. Brian all the way, stopped, almost had it knocked away. Edmondson has the ball. Goes into Arnett Holman, overweight. Holman up and in. Ten points for Arnett. Good play by the Chicago senior, 36-31, Iowa. I think Lou Olson thought there should have been a reach-around foul on that one. Is Hanson having knocked away and stolen by Drake Morris? And stolen right back by the Hawkeyes. Four on one. Hanson fires. No. Arnold off. Up and in. Arnold has 10. 38-31. In favor of the Hawkeyes, Hanson and Arnold and Allman all have 10 apiece. 17-22 to play. Seven-point lead for the Hawks. Carroll with the ball. Gives it to Edmondson. The Boilermakers need some instant offense, Bob. They're not able to get the ball inside. Their offense is way outside, about 28 feet from the bucket. That's a tough place to score from. They need to uh, start to penetrate that Iowa man-to-man. -man. Drake Morris will give to Edmondson. Spins, knocked away, got it back again. He'll send it outside to Brian Walker, looking for his first field goal. Got it, Brian Walker. Scores, 38-33, Iowa. Hawkeyes, 6-5 and five in conference play. Could pull within one of Purdue. And the top spot in the Big Ten, or fall three off the pace. Comes outside to Crapson. Drives in, lays it up, and scores! He's got 10. Three Hawkeyes. Hanson, Arnold, and Crafterson all have 10. Big opportunity there missed by Purdue to get in front of Crafterson and pick up that fourth foul. He went in uncontested as a foul is called on Boyle. That's one on him, first on either team in the second half. So the ball will be out of bounds to the visiting Boilermakers. Eight fouls against Purdue in the game, 10 against Iowa. 16-19 remaining to be played in the game. Iowa leads by seven. Comes out to uh, Arnett Holman. Steve Walker is in the lineup, number 12 for the Boilermakers, the senior out of Lebanon. Steve gives it to Brian. Here's the ball knocked away, hit last by Crafterson, trying to help out in the officiating. 
The officials are Robert Burson, Fred Jaspers, and Jill Haggard here today. We played nearly four minutes of the second half. It was a five-point spread when the half began. Right now at seven, Iowa on top. Steve Walker with the ball, out to Bryan. Purdue playing way away from the basket here. This is Steve Walker, it'll be short. Rebounded by Arnold. He goes ahead to Hanson. Hanson in, up, no. Pulled off underneath by Boyle, lost the ball. Foul on the play. And the foul will be marked against Edmondson. Number two on him. First foul on Purdue in this half. We'll have a timeout with 15.45 to play in today's game. You're watching Purdue Basketball with the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue trails Iowa 40 to 33. <laughs> was injured on that last play of just before the timeout. He got the foul. He also got something hit in his mouth, a tooth, and he's gone to the dressing room. That's uh, Keith battling under there. And something happened as the ball goes loose. The foul was on Edmondson, and Edmondson got hurt. The ball will be out of bounds to Iowa. The Hawkeyes lead by seven. We have 15.45 to play in today's game. Hanson comes outside to Boyle. Fires, no. Wait off the board. Looking for help outside to Arnold. He fires, no. Underneath, tipped around. Boilermakers get it. Almost kicked away by Brian Walker after Steve had tipped the ball. It'll belong to Purdue. This is a big trip down the floor for the Boilermakers. Steve Walker goes inside. Carroll fires, no. Foul on the play, and the foul will be on number 54, Steve Craftison, his third and the second on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Away from the ball, the Boilermakers have um, Kevin Stallings in there replacing Keith Edmonds, who made that substitution during that timeout. Purdue's ball underneath the Boilermaker basket, and uh, Brian Walker will throw it inbounds. Way outside to Stallings. He hasn't scored this afternoon. Brian Walker will set it up. We played nearly five minutes of the second half. Seven-point lead for Purdue. Still Purdue's playing away from the basket. Stallings fires, deflected. Underneath, Steve Walker puts it up and in. Steve gets his first basket. 40-35, Iowa. Here come the Hawkeyes. Lost only once here this year in nine games. Arnold hawked by Brian Walker. Goes to Boyle, stalked by Steve Walker. Boyle fires, nice play by Boyle. He's got eight, 42-35, Iowa. The Hawkeyes playing with a lot of confidence here in the second half. They really came out firing the ball at the backboard when they started the half. They got several quick ones. Purdue was able to counter, and they can't afford to go cold. Harrell didn't get the roll, but the tip-in is by Steve Walker. He's got four, and the Hawkeye fans thought it should have been a goaltending call. 42-37. Carroll has only one field goal. He has seven points. He's five out of ten at the line. Hasn't scored in the second half. We played nearly six minutes. Here is Boyle sending it outside to Hanson. Goes over to Waite. Waite looking for help. Back outside to Boyle. Boyle hawked by Steve Walker. Out to Waite. Back to Boyle. And away from the ball, we've got a foul. Kevin Stallings, guilty of his first. And the second on the team. The Hawkeyes have three players already in double figures and another Kevin Boyle at eight. Crafterson, Arnold, and Hanson each have ten apiece. The Boilermakers have only one player in double figures. That's Arnett Holman with ten. Purdue has lost the last two years it has played here in Iowa City. In fact, they lost both games last year, but won earlier this year at Mackey Arena. This is Hansen with the ball. Back out to Arnold. Lays it in the lane. The hook is good by Crafterson. He's got 12. And the Hawkeyes lead by seven again. Boilermakers just can't get it below that seven mark. Here is Brian Walker. No. Tip by Steve. Third straight basket by Steve Walker. It's 44-39. Steve doing a good job getting to the board as both of the Iowa big men, along with Boyle, trying to keep Carroll off the backboard. Steve Walker then able to slip to the inside. Three straight tips. Here is a nice place. Oh, to Patterson. He's got 14. He got by Strolling. 46-39, Iowa. They worked the ball very well inside that time. 
Steve Walker gives it to Bryant. Here is the give to Carroll. Needs a big basket. Didn't get the roll, and the Hawkeyes get the rebound. Kevin Boyle gets it. Arnold takes it up. Well, Hawkeyes could get the biggest lead of the afternoon. Foul on Brian Walker, his third, and the third on the team. Brian Walker commits a blocking foul. Big foul on Brian that time as number 11 Edmondson, I believe, is still in the locker room. He had a cut on his tongue that required stitches a couple of weeks ago. He may have re-injured that or got another cup on his lip. We don't know at this point, but it's... Uh, very important that Brian be able to stay in the ball game as Drake Morris is going to check in now probably for Brian to protect him from getting that fourth foul no he's going to be yes it is for Brian so Brian will go to the bench with three fouls and that's a big uh, big problem for Purdue Lou Dalton looking for his 97th Iowa victory as teams have lost to 61 he's in his sixth year here at Iowa here's Arnett Holman almost making the steal but fell out of bounds so Iowa will try again. 12-39 remaining to be played in the game. The Iowa Hawkeyes lead by seven. They've had that lead on a number of occasions. The biggest lead produced led by only one. The ball comes outside to Kevin Boyle. Kenny Arnold with 10 points. Hanson with 10. Boyle with eight. Rafterson with 14. Loose ball. Steve Walker pulls it down. Morris brings it down. Stallings out to Arnett Holman looking for his 12th point. No, but there's a foul. Steve Walker, second foul on Steve, four on the team. Ball out of bounds to Iowa. Joe Barry Carroll has not scored in the second half. He has seven points, only one field goal here. Five out of ten at the free throw line. Walker has three field goals in the second half. It comes inbounds to Kevin Boyle. Little more than 12 minutes to play in the game. Iowa leads by seven. Kenny Arnold with the ball, guarded by Drake Morris. Evan Boyle, guarded by Steve Walker. Boyle feeds it to Craftison, turns, scores. He's got 16. And the biggest lead of the afternoon. Nine points for Iowa. Rafterson having a big day, and the Iowa fans really appreciate it. Eight points here in the second half going against Purdue's top defender, Arnett Holman. Arnett can't get it. Rebounded by Kenny Arnold. Goes ahead to Craftison. Stops in the lane. Wait up. Good. Great score. His first game. And the Hawkeyes lead by 11. And Purdue's have scored three unanswered baskets to take a lead now of 11 and this is a pass in underneath to wait and he gets his first field goal and that gives Iowa a 50 to 39 lead over the visiting Boilermakers as I indicated earlier Purdue's had difficulty winning here at Iowa they've lost the last two years out here in fact only 15 times in the 96 game series has Purdue been able to win Drake Morris drills it in six points for Drake 41 points for Purdue in the series, Purdue has won 51 times and lost 44. Here's a steal by Brian Walker, comes down and misses the layup. And it is cleared off by Arnold. Arnold takes it back up. Here's Boyle firing, scoring. Boyle has 10. The Boilermakers had a sure gimme there and blew it. 52 to 41. Of course, when things are going bad, they go bad all around. 10 48 remaining in the game. Iowa leads by 11. Here is Arnett Hallman, spinning, shooting, scoring. He's got a dozen. 52-43. Iowa, Arnold brings it up. Arnold on the dribble. Arnold stops, shoots from 14. No, Brian Walker gets the ball through the traffic. Purdue a little slow in getting back down the floor. 10-24 to re remains to be played in the game. Arnett Hallman has been the offense for the Boilermakers. Misses this one. Waite pulls it down. Wait needs help. Gives that ball off to Kenny Arnold. Arnett Holman, the only Purdue player in double figures. The Hawkeyes have four. Here is passes to Hanson. Comes out to Wait. Sends it underside to Craftsison. Puts it up in. He's got 18. He scored 17 in the victory that Purdue scored over Iowa earlier this year. His best game has been 20. He's only two away from that. 
Here's Carroll, almost lost it, gets it back, pulls it up, and it's off, no good. Francisson pulls it off. Here comes Arnold. Arnold lays it off. Hanson scores, also a foul on the play. Brian Walker scores. Hanson scores his 12th point, and the Hawkeyes lead by 13, and the crowd is going wild. Mike Scarce is coming back into the lineup for Purdue. Hanson will also go to the free throw line. The Hawkeyes have been at the line seven, made six. Good hustle by the Hawkeyes. They've got it all going their way right now, up by 13. Boilermakers looking for some kind of a combination of players here that can get going. They've just had problems. Hallman's going to come out now. Number 11 is Keith Edmondson into the lineup as Purdue goes with a small lineup. It's number 11, Edmondson, 33 Morris, 23 is Mike Scarce, 20 is Walker, and Carroll is still in there, number 22. And it's been a tough afternoon, especially here in the second half as Craftsison has come out red hot, wanting the basketball inside and being able to put it into the hole anytime he gets it. So the Boilermakers with 9.28 remaining, 56-43. Uh, they need to make a move right now. Hanson at the line. Been up there once before, unable to convert. Looking for his 13th point of the afternoon and gets it. And the Hawkeyes lead 57 to 43. 14 points. And that's the big lead. 9.20 left to play. Edmondson gives it to Brian Walker. The Boilermaker's still way away from that basket. Brian Walker with it. Here's the alley-oop to Carroll. No, Scarce comes off, puts it up and in. Scarce gets the basket. He's got eight. 57-45, Iowa. Hanson throws it down quickly to Boyle. Stops, double-teamed, shoots anyway. No, pulled off there by Mike Scarce, who is back after the injury. Edmondson uh, is also in there. So he and Scarce both came back as Edmondson came off the floor. He went to the dressing room for a long while. Here's Edmondson jumping, shooting, no. Tip back out, loose ball. Should be a walking violation. Purdue gets the ball, though. Here's Scarce up, no, foul. And a foul on Scarce, elbowing his first. Five on the team. Mike Scarce pushing off is guilty of the foul. Unbelievable calls here this afternoon. Number 30, uh, Arnold went to the floor, should have had a traveling violation. Scarce goes up his whack and gets called for an offensive foul. And that makes it tough for the guys not knowing what's going to happen out there. You just have to uh, recover, come back, find out what they're doing, and get the game going. 57-45, Purdue down by 12. 8.32 remaining to be played in the game. Arnold gives it off to wait. Kevin Boyle takes it into the forecourt for the Hawkeyes, working against Edmondson. Back outside Arnold. Arnold against Brian Walker. Arnold stops, shoots, scores. Arnold has 12. And the Hawkeyes lead 59 to 45. Eight minutes and eight seconds left to play. Cratchison has 18. Hanson 13. Arnold 12. Boyle 10. The Boilermakers have only one man in double figures, and that's Arnett Holman. And at the moment, Arnett is on the line. Carroll looking for only a second field goal. Can't get it. Edmondson comes off. Edmondson puts it up. No. It's rebounded by Boyle. Arnold takes it down. Lays it off to the left. Wait. Drives. No. Pulled off by Mike Scarce. Scarce through the traffic. Scarce through. Stop. Shoots the short jumper. No. Pulled off by Boyle. Boyle throws it ahead. Arnold drives through the traffic. Four on two. Arnold down. Puts it up. Yes. Also a foul called on the play. I believe it may have been a charge. Charge on Arnold, but he does get the basket, his 14th point, and that's 61 to 45 for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And now uh, with 7.24 to play in the game. You're watching Purdue Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue trails Iowa, 61 to 45. We're back at Iowa City. How tough is it to win on the road? <laughs> <laughs> Only Purdue and Indiana have been able to win all their home games this year. Uh, that is in conference play. Uh, both those teams also have lost one game. They both lost to uh, non-conference foes. Indiana lost to North Carolina and Purdue lost to Syracuse. But uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes have only lost once here this year. This used to be a great uh, rivalry between Purdue and Iowa. It still is. Uh, Purdue used to come into Iowa and Iowa to Purdue. And 
whoever the top scorer was for Purdue used to get a bundle of points, and Iowa would try to stop everybody else. Of course, that changed when the coaching staff changed. Here is Kevin Boyle making his steal from the Boilermakers. Boilermakers trail by 16 here. The lead was only 32 to 27 when the second half began. Arnold with the ball, gives it off, and the shot is missed by Boyle. It's cleared by the Boilermakers, and Drake Morris comes down. Arnett Holman is still at the other end, holding his back, trotting slowly now into the forecourt. He gets the ball out there near the timeline. He's hurting. At least it appears that he was. Stallings with the ball, gives to Arnett Holman. 14 points for Arnett. 61-47, Iowa, six and a half to play. Arnett caught a, a knee just below his lower back, and I think that'll, uh, that'll be fine in just a moment. It just takes a little time for that to wear off. Arnold is fouled, and I think it'll be on Kevin Stallings. Substitution, Arnett Holman is out, and Mike Scarce is in. 32, Vince Brookins is in, and out is Kevin Boyle. Foul was on Stallings, his second, and the sixth on the team. The Iowa Hawkeyes lead by 14, 6.26 to play in this game. And at the free throw line will be Arnold, been up there twice before, and made a both. Iowa 7 out of 8 at the free throw line. The Boilermakers 7 out of 13, but they haven't been to the free throw line here in the second stanza. Arnold with 14 points. Looks now for the bonus. 62-47. Now we have an official's discussion going on down here. The official score is called over the referee. They find out who it was and finally decide it is on Stallings. So the bonus shot now for Kenny Arnold with 15. He got only six against Purdue back on January 30 at Mackey when the Boilermakers won that one 70 to 56. 16 points for Kenny Arnold. And a 63 47 lead again for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 16 point spread. Carroll looking for only his second field goal. Didn't get it again. He's pulled off. Arnold gets the ball. Carroll got a field goal early, then went to the line 10 times, made it five. That's all. Hasn't scored or been to the free throw line in the second half. This is Arnold laying it off. Here is a steal by Stallings. Only the sixth turnover for Iowa. Ball knocked away. It'll be out of bounds Purdue. Good hustle by Brookins to get back in that play. Morris streaking down the right side of the four. Brookins came clear from the other side to catch up and knock it away. And so Stallings will throw it in to Carroll. Outside to Drake Morris. 550 remaining. Purdue down by 63-47. Steve Walker's getting ready to come back in. Stallings fires, scores, and there's also a foul called on the play. But let's see. Well, I'm not sure what the deal is here. They've called the timeout anyway. They haven't put the basket up yet. Anyway, a timeout with 5.41 to play. You're watching Purdue Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue trails Iowa 63-47. to Well, Joe Barry Carroll was called for a foul in the play, nullifying the basket by the Boilermakers. That was away from the ball. I'm not sure they uh, might have could have given that because it was in the air. But anyway, at the free throw line, will be Steve Craftison to shoot two. He has 18. He's the leading scorer on the floor, shooting only 64% from the free throw line this year. And it is cleared off by the Hawkeyes. And a foul on Stalling. Three fouls on him, eight on the team. Everything's going wrong here this afternoon for the Boilermakers, Bob. It's been a tough one, especially in the second half. Purdue had trouble in the first half, getting down by seven and not really being able to get past that five-point mark in the late stages of the half. In the second half, it's been all Iowa. They've been red hot, playing the good defense, the hustling offense, and uh, they've really got it going. Brookins misses, and it is cleared by Mike Scares. 16-point lead, 5.33 left to play. 
Steve Walker down to Mike Scares. They've really done the job on Joe Barry Carroll. He gets the ball and doesn't get the roll. It's out to Stallings. He fires. He scores. Stallings' first field goal. 63-49 in favor of Iowa. I think we'll see Iowa put the ball in the deep freeze in the next minute or two. They'll probably try to get it down to about three or four minutes on the clock, and then they'll put it away. This is Hanson with the ball. And now Kenny Arnold brings it up. Averaging 12, he has 16 here this afternoon. And a foul. And it's on Edmondson. Number three on Keith. Nine on the team. Your host for Purdue basketball is Farm Bureau Insurance. And it's 500 agents of the state of Indiana. Delighted to have you along our network today. Keith has that bandage across the, uh, across the lip there. Arnold, that's his 17th point of the afternoon. And Iowa's 10 out of 13. Arnold is 5 out of 5 at the free throw line. 18. Hawkeyes lead by 65 to 49. And they steal it away. Arnold lets it in. He's got 20. And the Hawkeyes lead 67-49. The biggest margin of victory Iowa ever scored over a Purdue team was 61 to 34, 27. Stallings had a block pulled down by Patterson. Throws it ahead to Arnold. Arnold almost lost it. Gives it off to Wait. Back to Arnold. Four and a half minutes to play. Offensive foul called on the Hawkeyes. And Arnold is guilty of it. His second. Only the fourth foul called on Iowa in this half. There's Arnold, just a little fella, slams at home, and he's played one fine ball game here this afternoon, sniping from the outside, and coming into the lineup, Kevin Boyle, number 40 for Iowa. And the Hawkeyes lead 67 to 49. Here's Brian Walker giving it off to Edmondson. Edmondson making a move on Brookins. Edmondson puts it up. No, Brookins guilty of a foul, his third. Only the fifth on Iowa in this half. Boilermakers have been called for nine. Purdue has not been able to get the ball inside successfully. It's been about seven minutes since they scored on the inside, and that was Arnett Hallman on a turnaround jumper. Then he was injured at the other end of the court playing defense on the rebound, was kicked in the back or in the uh, lower part or the upper part of the uh, leg, and he's been on the bench since. Edmondson at the line gets his fifth point of the afternoon. First time Purdue has been at the free throw stripe here in the second half. Purdue is 8 out of 14 at the free throw line. Edmondson has 5 points. Now 6. Purdue is 9 out of 15. Trailing 67 to 51. Arnold throws it to Wait. Back out to Boyle. Grafton now to Boyle. And the Hawkeyes bring it back outside. Leading by 16. In the middle. Scoring is Boyle. He's got 12. 69-51. Iowa. Four players in double figures. The Boilermakers have only one man. Arnett Holman with 14. Purdue plays Northwestern Thursday. Scarce with the ball. Fires? No. And a foul. Over the back is Edmondson. He has four and ten on the team. The Hawkeye fans, better than 13,000, are enjoying this one. Best thing to do at this point is to get out of this game alive without having anybody injured. Arnett Hallman already, as we mentioned a moment ago, with an injury on the bench. Edmondson has a Band-Aid on his lip. Don't know how serious that is. Of course, Drake Morris was injured against Minnesota. That seems to be uh, recovering pretty well. So Purdue in a bad spot here, 69-51. Be awful tough to get back in it. I'm sure that they're not going to give up, though, and they're going to keep working. But it's a, a rough assignment with only 3.30 remaining here at Iowa City. Carroll gets the rebound. It's Steve Walker with the ball. Way across to Edmondson. Into Carroll. Up, and it didn't fall. Pulled off by Scarce. Up and in. Basket will count. And there's also a foul on the play. Scarce gets the basket. He's got 10 points, and the foul is on weight. That'll be his fourth. That cuts the lead 69 to 53. There are only 317 left. 
Joe Barry Carroll having one of those afternoons that happens to everybody. Not able to throw one in the river, I don't believe. Joe Barry working hard on the court, getting good shots inside. They just won't fall. And when that happens, all you can do is keep your head up, keep trying. Eventually, they'll start going in again. Scares, misses. It's rebounded by Waite. Pass comes down to Crafterson. Back out to Hanson. Now to Arnold. Arnold almost had it taken away. Gets it back. Fires it outside to Hanson. Boyle fires. No. And Crafterson gets it off. Waite gets it off. 252 remaining. Here is Arnold. And it's keep away. Four corner offense. Everybody in the Big Ten now has this offense. A few years ago they didn't use it, but now they do. Here is Arnold driving in. Carroll can't hold to the rebound. It'll finally go out of bounds. It'll belong to Purdue. Substitution. Arnett Hallman comes in. And coming out is Joe Barry Carroll. And Carroll will wind up with seven points, only one field goal, and five out of ten at the free throw line. Purdue looking to go with the quick defense. They'll be putting the ball on the backboard uh, pretty quickly each time down and they have to try to play that man to man and tough zone of full court defense. Arnett Holman turns. He had it blocked back to him. He'll fire from further out and score. He's got 16. 69 55. Well we mentioned three or four times that Arnett likes to play against Iowa and he does. He's got 16 here. The foul is on Steve Walker but nobody else has been able to help him out much. Arnett with 16 early. Joe Barry had the shot but just off a little bit and uh, didn't score anything in the second period here. So we'll go to the free throw line with Iowa. Hawkeyes have really cluttered the inside with bodies. Both Wade and Craftsman drop back down on Joe Barry, make it very, very difficult for him to get the shot up. A little body contact, not enough really to commit a foul, but certainly enough to knock you off balance, and Joe Barry was not able to uh, adjust to that, adapt to it with the shooting abilities, and had one of those afternoons, so the Boilermakers down by 14 with 2.10 remaining. We'll probably go in and commit a lot of fouls between now and the end of the ball game. And Hanson adds one more, gets his 14th point. Iowa is 12 out of 17 at the line, and the Hawkeyes have reached the 70 mark. Their offensive average is 73.7. It's pulled off by Arnett Hallman. The Boilermakers normally score nearly 71 points a game. Today they've been held to 55. Here is Mike. Scares. Turns and can't get it. It's pulled off by Bob Hansen. Kevin Boyle takes it to the baseline. Sends it out to Hansen. One thirty three remaining. Foul going to be called on Arnett Holman. Number two on him. Number 11 on the team. The lowest offensive output I believe that the Boilermakers have had this year has been 56 points. At West Lafayette the final score was 70 to 56. Right now standing at 70 55 with 131 remaining. That makes these two teams on paper fairly even. And the ball is pulled off by Mike Scares. Well, in the overall play, 15 and 5, the even mark. In conference play, Purdue is 8 and 3, and the Hawkeyes 6 and 5. Scares had it knocked away, but there's the foul. And the foul will be on number 40, Kevin Boyle, number 2 on him. With 1 at 18 left to play and a 15, 15 point lead, the Boilermakers' mark will fall to 8 and 4. And Iowa will move to seven and five, so just a game back. They really wanted this one. Now we're going to have a timeout call with a minute 18 to play in the game. You're watching Purdue basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue trails Iowa 70 to 55. But back in Iowa City with a minute and 18 left to play in this one, the Iowa Hawkeyes have a 15 point lead over the Purdue Boilermakers. And Purdue starting the day with a game lead will find it slipping to a half game pending what Ohio State does tonight. Ohio State will be playing Michigan State at Ohio State. The Iowa Hawkeyes are back in the thick of things. And remember, Iowa 
Purdue and Michigan State tied for the conference championship last year. Iowa will be back within one game of the top spot here. Iowa and Illinois now will have won 16 overall. Purdue at 15. Scarce at the line. Just another one pulled off the board by Kevin Boyle and uh, Arnold will bring it up with a minute 12 left to play Arnold lays it off number 42 Mike Henry checked in during that timeout 69 junior out of Elgin Illinois drive is no good by Arnold and a charge on Arnold his third and the seventh on the team so we'll go to the other end one and bonus So we'll be at the free throw line with the Hawka, with the Boilermakers, with exactly one minute left to play in this one. Billy makes that game next Thursday for Purdue, a big one, again on the road, going to Northwestern, and the Wildcats played the Boilermakers to all they wanted in West Lafayette before Purdue was able to win that one. So Purdue must get up off the mat and come back on Thursday night and get back on a winning track. Steve Walker gets his seventh point. 77-56 couple of times this year when the top team has been defeated in the league I know it happened to Ohio State a couple of times everybody else who was chasing them lost so if Ohio State should lose tonight would be a great break for the Boilermakers although I think Ohio State will have something to say about that since uh, Michigan State defeated them by 20 in East Lansing 70 57 Iowa here come the Hawkeyes and they give it to Henry and he lost the ball unofficially I have Iowa with only seven turnovers here in this game Purdue 12 Here's Brian Walker coming down. 50 seconds left. Steve Walker. Nope. Underneath. Foul. Scarce. Number two on Mike. So we'll go to the other end, and a free shot will be forthcoming for the Hawkeyes. We mentioned a moment ago that score of 70 now to 57. 45 seconds remaining. And uh, looking at the spread between these two clubs and along with uh, Indiana, Ohio State, Illinois, who is uh, now back in it. Uh, Indiana, not that far off the pace. All of these teams, looking at that five uh, loss figure in the Big Ten Conference race, that's the figure that they said the most losses you could have and still win the conference. And with Purdue now picking up their fourth loss, it looks like those people who were talking in the preseason, the coaches and the press, pretty well knew what they were talking about in terms of balance in this league. And so Henry... Gets his first point of the afternoon. Makes them both. It's 72-57. 42 seconds remaining. Mike Scarce with the ball. Out to Brian Walker. Steve Walker. Out to Edmondson. Edmondson fakes. Fires. No. Loose ball. Saved on a good hustle by the Hawkeyes. Saved by Hanson. And now it'll be out of bounds. 26 seconds remaining. Hawkeyes make some more substitutions. Number 20, John Darcy comes in, and leaving is Kevin Boyle. Number 23, Mike Aarons out of Chicago is in, and leaving is Kenny Arnold. In is number 10, Randy Norton. Also, the Boilermakers make a couple of substitutions. Roosevelt Barnes, 44, and Ted Kitchell, 41. So we're playing the final 26 seconds now with the game out of reach. Five second call. Ball belongs to Purdue. And it'll be thrown in by Steve Walker. Mike Scarce turns, shoots, no. Loose ball. It'll go. Brooken saved it. Mike Scare saved it, throws it out there to Kitchell. Kitchell up and no. Kitchell should be a jump ball. Kitchell guilty of a foul. So with 11 seconds, we'll go to the other end and the free shot will be forthcoming to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Just like uh, Everett Bass said after the last game, this one was going to be a war. Hasn't been a beautiful ball game, although the Iowa Hawkeyes have played very, very well. It's been rugged at spots. 
Purdue not able to hit from the outside nor the inside. I had a tough time with the stripe. The Hawkeyes in the second half came out firing and they've really played good solid basketball. And so at the line is Brookins. Adds another point, 73-57, and Brookins looks for the bonus. It's five points for Vince Brookins. Seventy-four fifty-seven. Only eight seconds left. Mike Scares fires. He got it. Scares has twelve. Fifty-nine. Time is running out. Two seconds. That's the end of the game. And the Iowa Hawkeyes have defeated the visiting Boilermakers. The Iowa Hawkeyes are back in the race. Only a game back now of Purdue, which has seen its lead slip to a half a game over Ohio State. Final score is Iowa seventy-four.